this video is on complex numbers. So here we started off by saying, well, what is I? Because the imaginary numbers are always have this I in there. So I is actually, this is what it is. It's just the square root of negative 1. It's been designated as that value, so that's what it is. So I to the first power is just this right here, which is just equal to itself. And so what happens when you square it? Well, when you square I, you're going to, the square and the square root will cancel, and you're left with negative 1. When it's cubed, uh, I cubed is just going to be, so I wrote it this, I wrote I, uh, the square root of negative 1 squared, and then I added this other one right here. Well, I didn't add it, but I multiplied it into this one. So this is a square root of negative 1. Uh, the square and the square root cancel out, and you're just left with negative I. And for I to the fourth, I just wrote it uh, like this. So the square root of negative 1 squared whoops, times the square root of negative 1 squared, and that's just going to give you 1. And uh, the nice thing about those is that they'll allow you to... Uh, use multiples. So why don't we use, let me show you how you could use those to kind of simplify your some of your uh, homework problems that they'll probably give you. So how about this one right here where we have, let's say that they say, uh, well, let's scroll down a little bit more. So anyhow, I rewrote these right here first. So i to the first power is i, i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth power is just 1. So here, and we're going to use these to solve these two over here. So if in class I'll probably ask you, okay, what what uh, what is i to the eighth power equal to? Well, an easy way you could use this is you could say, well, i to the eighth power is the same thing as i four plus four, and that can be rewritten as i to the fourth power times i to the fourth power. And we know from right here that i to the fourth power is actually equal to one. So this is going to be equal to 1. How about this number right here, i to the 23? Well, we do know that uh, we can rewrite this as i to the... Well, you actually have lots of i to the 4th powers, don't you? Because uh, you can fit i to the 4th 5 times into that. Uh, so I'm going to simplify this a bit because you could actually use multiples of... Since we already have this one right here, i to the 8th, we already know that's equal to 1. So if I say i8 plus 8, that would be 16, plus 4, that would be 20, and then we'll just say plus 3. So we know that i to the 8, oh, and this will be rewritten as this. That will be rewritten as, well, since i to the 8 times i to the 8 times i to the 4th power times i to the 3 power. Now we already know that i to the 8 and i to the, we already know what i to the 8 is. That's 1. So we can just cross that off and write that as 1. You can write that as 1. i to the 4th power, we know that is 1. And i cubed, we know that as being negative i. So that's going to be multiplied by negative i. So i to the 23rd power is just equal to negative i. So, okay, now let's continue on. Now, now that we know how to do that, what happens if we, they ask us to rewrite these numbers? So how would you write rewrite the square root of negative 64? Well, in order to rewrite this, we need to change the interior in here a little bit. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the negative 1 from the 60, or the negative from the 64. And that's separated that way. Now you have a positive 64 times a negative 1. And so now we could just separate these square roots this uh, the square root of negative 1 that is just i and the square root of negative 64 is 8 so that can be rewritten as uh, whoops as 8 i now how about this one the square root of negative 75 so again we're going to separate that negative 1 from the 75 or the negative I mean so we separated it there and now we're just going to um, separate the square roots. So now we're going to have square root of negative 1 times the square root of 75. Now you actually don't have to go through this whole process. I mean, you could already, um, you could automatically just by looking at it, you know that you're going to have an i in there, an imaginary number. But I'm just doing it just, just because, just so you could see the actual steps. So here, the square root of negative 1, that's just going to turn into i. 
And this square root of 75, well, that can be reduced down to uh, 3 times 25. And so that's going to be split up. So you're going to actually do the square root of 3 times the square root of 25. Let's not forget about the i. So this turns into 5. So this will be, and the way this is normally written, well, hey, let me just write this down. I don't want to skip any steps, especially not if you're if you're learning this for the first time, it just doesn't help to skip steps. So here we have i times the square root of 3 times 5. And then they usually rewrite this as this. This is how you'll normally see it written. You'll see 5, then you'll see the square root of 3, and then you'll have the i at the back. So now that's how you would rewrite this one. So now how about this one, the square root of negative 11? Well, this one's pretty cut and dry. So this is just negative 1 times 11 square root. And you separate it again. And that turns into i, square root of 11. And so the answer to this is, and you can write it that way or you could write it this way. This is usually how you'll see it like that. So that's how you do those. Uh, let's see. Now, what happens if, uh, well, no, here in this part, uh, this is the standard form of complex numbers. So with these, this is how you actually write it. Uh, you write A plus BI. This this is the form they'll be in. And an example of that is uh, 5 plus 3I. And that's how you'll see them in, in the standard form, or complex numbers in standard form. This first portion is the real part. And the second portion is the imaginary part. So now let's do a quick problem in that. So here if I said I want you to find x and y or the value of x and y, when you look at this it might look a little bit confusing, but what you need to realize is that this first portion is the real portion because there's no i in there, there's no imaginary uh, value to this. This part is the imaginary part and you know because it has the i in there. This part right here is also the real part and this part is the imaginary part. You know, let me uh I'm going to change this. So this part will be the real part. This is the real part and the imaginary part. This is the imaginary part. So Let's solve first for y. In order to solve for y, the way you rewrite this is you say 4i is equal to 8y minus 4i. Just like that. Now, this, for the real portion, you would rewrite it as 5x minus 10 is equal to 5. So in solving for this, we, uh, we say 5x is equal to we're going to add plus 10 here, plus 10 here. So this is going to be 15. Uh, then you're going to divide by 5. So you're going to say x is equal to uh, 15 divided by 3. I mean, I'm sorry, by 5. Uh, 15 divided by 5. So x is equal to 3. Now, when solving for the other portion, uh, you don't actually need to write these i's in here for, for this portion because you already know you're solving for the imaginary part. So you say 4 is equal to 8y minus 4. And so you, uh, you add 4 to this side, add 4 to this side. So you're going to get 8 is equal to 8y. So y is going to be equal to 1. And that's how you would solve for their x and y in this problem. So anyhow, I hope that made sense, uh, and I, I hope it helped you out. So I'll be making a few more on uh, complex numbers. So good luck in your classes, and uh, I hope this helped you out.